Hi there! In this quick video, we're going to be looking at how to set up multiple versions of the IDF on your system. Let's get started. Firstly, let's go ahead and launch VS Code. Now, I've already got the IDF installed. All right, if you haven't done uh, that already, right, what you can do is you can go to the extensions and you can look for ESP and you should see this Espressive IDF coming up here. And you can go ahead and install it and it'll basically give you everything that you need uh, in order to run your system within VS Code. Now, uh, once you've done that, you can basically uh, hit F1 and you can start typing ESP-IDF and you can then go ahead and click on Configure ESP IDF Extension. This would normally come up by default, by the way, when you finish installing it, but I'm going to it now. All right. So if I'm here for the first time, I'm going to go ahead and press Express uh, to basically install the default IDF, choose a location and just install it. Um, advance if I wanted essentially a little bit more control, uh, or I could basically go through to the existing ESP IDF getting started doc documentation from Espresso, uh, download it and then essentially use an existing setup. And if you look at my course, that's effectively the route that I choose, which I normally would like to do. But in this particular case, because I've already got the IDF and I'm just basically trying to see how I can get multiple versions of the IDF installed, I'm going to go ahead and press Express. But before I do that, I just want you to notice one thing. Notice that over here, it basically says over here, Express for Global uh, Workspace or Workspace Folder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and say, I just want this for a particular workspace. Let's go ahead and basically then go ahead and say, Express. So over here, I get the opportunity to download a different version of the IDF. And the trick is to not override what I have already got. So I'm not gonna go ahead and find it on my system. What I want is a new version of, let's say for example, 4.2. I would norm I normally run with uh, the latest, which is essentially 5.0.2. Um, but let's go ahead and actually get an earlier version just for demonstration purposes. Obviously, if you're moving from an earlier version to a later version, it would apply the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that one over here. And now I'm going to basically find a place to locate it. Um, and notice that it's got the suffix of ESP IDF. So what I might do is I might basically open up this over here and just go through to C, ESP, and I've got all my various different versions over here. And I don't have version 4.2. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to say version V4.2. And then I'm going to go inside there and I'm going to say new folder and this is going to be for the IDF. All right. And then I'm going to create a new folder for the tools. Now the tools are an interesting one because essentially they're almost essentially the same for each version, but I like to kind of keep things separate anyway. So I'm going to select this IDF. So we're going to have CESP 4.2 IDF forward slash ESP IDF. And then we're going to change the tools directory to CESP 4.2 version 4.2 tools. So I've kind of basically put them together here. All right, so let's go ahead and install this. And it's going to take a bit of time, but uh, we'll be patient and uh, I'll speed up the camera. So now that version 4.2 has been installed, let's go ahead and create a project. So I'll go ahead and say F1 and I'll say new project. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and select a directory. So I'll go to my spike directory for my throwover code. And let's call this uh, project uh, V4 for lack of imagination. Okay, and I'll just use the standard uh, rubber kit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select a template and I'll choose one from the ESPIDF. And um, this is now looking inside the version four directory. So you, you might be missing a couple of things over here. So just be aware of that. So let's go ahead and just go for the hello world and we'll create a project using this template. And then we'll switch it out. We'll switch out VS Code to this new uh, project that we've just created. All right. Um, and we'll just expand this over here and just close this previous one because I don't need it. And let's go ahead and expand this over here. And it's asking me if I want to open up a, in the dev container for Docker. I don't really want to for this current folder. So we'll just leave it at that. And if we go ahead and examine what's going underneath the hood, we'll go to the VS Code stuff here. And we look at the settings.json, right? We'll notice over here that it's actually pointing to the version 4.2. You can see that over here. You can see that over here. So this is actually a 4.2 project. 
Right, so let's make sure it actually works. Um, first thing I'm going to do is compile it. So I'm just going to basically uh, go to the main.c and go to the hello world main. And let's clean this up a little bit. So I'll delete all of this stuff and get rid of those header files. I don't want them. And I'll just have this printf hello world. And that's all I want. All right, let's save that. Okay. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and open up the terminal. And, uh, and let's go ahead and say idf.py build. Let's, let's see if it actually builds. Uh, just while it's building, something I want to mention. I have noticed that uh, sometimes you might find that you get red squigglies under the header files. Uh, in that case, go to the C++ properties, Jason, and just make sure that that line is included. Sometimes I find that that gets missing somehow. Um, and uh, if you have a look at the path over there, it's basically pointing to the tools directory. Uh, and it's, it's pretty much uh, the... I'll just show you what that looks like while that's building. So C, E, S, P. So we're going to the tools directory. And in this particular case, it's from the version 4.2 tools, tools. All right. And then essentially you select the chip that you want. So you could either select in this case, uh, the extension ESP32 or the, the uh, S2. They didn't have the C3 and all those other ones that we have now back in the day of 4.2. So we'll select that. And then you can see there's only one thing we can click, which is that. There's only one thing we can click, which is that. And then essentially we click on the bin. You look for the uh, the GCC, the ELF GCC, which is this one here. And that's the target that you want. Okay, so you can see that that's pointing to uh, that particular directory. So you just go ahead and add that path and then that will resolve the studio.h if you have a problem with it. Um, the other thing is that while it's basically working, uh, something I don't particularly like is effectively the, the default tag parser. I prefer the default settings, so I like to basically go default. And once that's done, it'll ask me to reload it, which I won't do while it's building. I'll wait for it to finish. Um, but I find that that gives me a much better uh, error handling and error sort of uh, detection. All right, so it's actually built, and that's all good. So. Um, this seems to be a good project. We still have IntelliSense. Uh, we've got the include libraries. So we've got the standard libraries such as string.h and so on. Um, and we've also got the ESP libraries such as ESP underscore um, ADC calculator or whatever we want. So that's all in place. Okay, so now this is now a version four IDF library. Okay, so what happens if I want to basically upgrade this to version five? Okay, so that's an interesting challenge. So if we basically uh, go ahead and just close these settings, notice that ESP 4.2, we'll close that out. And what I'll do is I'll go to F1 and I'll say configure ESP IDF extension. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say not global, but just for this particular one, for this workspace. All right, for this workspace, I want to use an existing setup. All right, and I want to basically use, in this particular case, my default, which is version 5.0.1. And this is going to be really super fast because it doesn't really need to install anything. It's just doing a little bit of configuration. So you can see it's done. Okay, uh, so we can go ahead and uh, close that guy. All right, and if we go back to our settings, we'll now notice that it's basically pointing to my uh, ESP tools and my ESP IDF directory. So now it's the default. Okay, so if I try to build this, it's probably going to cause an issue, all right, uh, because it's already been previously built on a previous one. So the first thing I would want to do is go IDF.py clean. And that proves that the IDF version is still working. And let's go ahead and say IDF.py build. that broke. And the reason probably is because it's still using the ESP IDF 4.2. So what we'll do is we'll basically just can these things and just close this and reopen it. Full clean and build. Now let's try that one more time. So I'll just go ahead and do a full clean. And now I will do a build. I suspect that actually having those windows or the terminal open didn't uh, reset the environment variables. 
So let's just give it one more try and hopefully this all works. And that looked like it's built. So would I like to add compile commands, Jason? Always yes. And always not the bootloader, but the compile commands. And that basically just gives you better intelligence over your artifacts. Cool. So one last thing, if we basically go F1 and we say new project, okay, uh, and we'll basically give it a uh, name of new project. And I'll put this back into the spike directory. So C project spike. Okay, and we'll just leave that as is and we'll choose a template. All right, and notice over here, now we've got more samples. Why? Because we're essentially using the global. So we're not using version four as the default anymore. We're now using five. So let's prove that. We'll go ahead and say sample project create using this template, switch it out. All right, and then essentially if we expand this out, don't want to show this again for our current folder. And if we look at VS Code and we look at the settings, we should see that we're actually pointing to the version, the default version, which is the version 5 on my machine. Right, so in this uh, brief video, we learned how to switch and change versions. Now, interestingly enough, right, because the IDF is recognized by VS Code extension, we can go hit F1, configure VS Code IDF extensions, and then we'll say for this folder, for this workspace folder, all right, or well, this workspace, I want to use an existing setup, and then I can choose which one I have actually just downloaded. So if I wanted to make it an old one again, I could go ahead and do that over here. Cool. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, bye.